Hello, Write Writers with Cruz here. We are going to be writing a paragraph today focusing on similes. So keep that in mind. If your interest is writing a paragraph using a poem on similes, tune into this video. All right, let's begin by, I have my poem that I've selected. It's a poem called Harlem by Langston Hughes. And the reason why I selected this poem is because it contains quite a few similes. And so it's a perfect poem to utilize. Remember, for me, it's super important to hyper-focus on one specific topic, which allows you to write a great paragraph. So the first thing I want to do is I've got my poem to the left, and then I've got my Google Doc to the right. And so I want to think about what is a simile and what does it mean? So similes are basically when writers compare. It's a comparison of two objects using like or as. So these important words are, I, I'm putting them in quotations because that's what distinguishes a simile from what's called a metaphor. So a simile is a comparison, comparing using like or as, and it can really be a comparison about anything. So it is completely open-ended as long as you're using like or as. Underneath that, I'm gonna write the word text evidence because that's what I wanna use to prove my po point. So I'm gonna put in text evidence and I'm gonna put lines from the poem. So now let's begin by looking at the poem itself. Harlem by Langston Hughes. What happens to a dream deferred? Does it dry up like a raisin in the sun or fester like a sore and then run? Does it stink like rotten meat? or crust and sugar over like a syrupy sweet. Maybe it just sags like a heavy load, or does it explode? All right, let's look at that one more time. Harlem by Langston Hughes. What happens to a dream deferred? Does it dry up like a raisin in the sun or fester like a sore and then run? Does it stink like rotten meat or crust and sugar over like a syrupy sweet? Maybe it just sags like a heavy load or does it explode? So here we have our topic. Our topic is Harlem and we know Harlem is a location. And then we begin to read the first question that's presented in the poem and it doesn't say Harlem. Instead, it talks about a dream being deferred. And so we want to make sure that we focus on this idea of dream. But we also want to make sure that we understand what does it mean to have a dream deferred? What does this word mean? So when we're looking at deferred, we want to make sure that we look up what deferred means. And when you think of deferred, I want you to think of delaying something or postponing something. So think of something that's being delayed or being postponed. I like to use, I'm going to use the word delay because delay also has a D in it. And so it helps me to remember what deferred means. When you defer something, you delay it. So what happens to a dream delayed? So keep that in mind as we're looking at this particular poem and looking for similes. So I'm gonna use a different color here because we've, got, we've definitely got um, the use of the word like. So I wanna underline every time Langston Hughes uses the word like to demonstrate a dream delayed, and then in the next line, he begins with, or in the next stanza, does it. So it is referring to what exactly? So I want to think of it referring back to this idea of dream, the dream delayed or the dream deferred. What happens to a dream deferred? Does 
a dream delayed or a dream deferred dry up like a raisin in the sun or fester like a sore and then run? Does it stink? It, again, does a dream deferred stink like rotten meat or crust and sugar over like a syrupy sweet? Maybe it, referring to the dream deferred, just sags like a heavy load. So here we've got our comparison. So he's comparing dream, a dream drying up, a dream deferred drying up like a raisin in the sun. So we want to make sure that we include that for our text evidence. So here we have dry up like a raisin in the sun. We have fester like a sore. We have stink like rotten meat. So I'm including these examples of text evidence because it has the word, it uses the word like, which shows that I have a simile. Here he does not use, Langston Hughes does not use as, so I have like instead. And then it says at the end, um, stink like rotten meat or crust and sugar over like a syrupy sweet. I'm just going to put crust like a syrupy sweet. I like the way that sounds together um, without the sugar. And again, you have, you have power as the writer. So you can choose different examples of text evidence. You do not have to, you know, use exactly what I have. That's, that's part of having the power as a writer. And we have um, sags like a heavy load. So I have um, examples here where we've got this idea of the dream deferred and we've got the dream being compared to drying up like a raisin in the sun, fester like a sore, stink like rotten meat, crust like a syrupy sweet, sags like a heavy load. So all of these are, we're putting basically moved these over to our Google Doc. And so now we've moved our text evidence. And now we want to make a very basic, you know, um, middle school example paragraph first, and then we'll level it up with a high school example. So I'm going to put that in quotations so I do not forget that that really is referring to our topic. What happens to a dream deferred? So I don't forget that as well, because now I'm going to move away from this poem to the writing itself. And I, again, I know this is Harlem by Langston Hughes. Make sure I have my poetry link there. Okay, now we're going to expand this Google Doc and sort of take it from there and begin writing our paragraph. So this is, um, again, just sort of putting up here the middle school example. So first thing I want to do for the reader is I want to make sure that I define what I'm talking about. So the reader, do not assume that the reader knows what a simile is. And this really helps the reader by giving the definitions within the first couple of sentences. We also want to introduce our topic. So we want to talk about the title, Harlem. It's a poem and it's written by Langston Hughes. So again, super important to assist our reader by letting the reader know where we're going and what we are doing. And so let's start off here. So the poem Harlem by Langston Hughes uses similes. And then we'll go into it after we define for the reader what a simile is. A simile is when a writer compares two nouns using like or as. And what I might do is I might italicize these for the reader and so I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to put some put this in italics using like or as. So I've got the title of my poem. It's Harlem. I know we know it's a poem. We know who it's written by and we know what the focus is about. 
this paragraph is going to focus on similes. And then we give a definition. A simile is when a writer compares two nouns, and we know that nouns, and if we want to put um, person, place, thing, or idea, using like or as, I can put that in there just for, the, for you all to know, using like or as. Now let's go ahead and start to use the text evidence. So we know that he's comparing a dream being delayed or deferred with all of these examples. And so to keep it again at a very basic middle school level, we're just identifying where the simile is happening. We are not explaining the why. We're analyzing it for fifth through seventh grade at first. And then the next paragraph that I do, that's when we'll get into analysis. The poem Harlem by Langston Hughes uses similes. A simile is when a writer compares two nouns, person, place, thing, or idea, using like or as. In his poem, Hughes compares a dream deferred to drawing up. So in this case, um, to, let's see, when you think of a raisin, um, so a raisin is, would it be kind of a fruit? Um, so this idea of um, to food, a dream deferred to food when he states, when he says dry up like a raisin in the sun. And when you think of drying up like a raisin in the sun, you know, what does it, what does a, a grape do? Um, and so I think I'm going to utilize that and I'm going to call it, I'm going to be um, a little bit fun here. And I'm going to say a dream deferred to a wrinkled grape. So, because that's, that's really what a raisin is. <laughs> so um, I'm going to put to a wrinkled grape. If you wanted to write a wrinkly grape, that could work too. Um, so I'm going to have some fun here, even though it's more of a, a little bit of a serious tone, but I just like the idea of that. In his poem, Hughes compares a dream deferred to a wrinkled grape when he says, dry up like a raisin in the sun. Then he compares this same delayed dream to an injury, fester like a sore. I think I'm just going to keep it with the same defer dream deferred to an injury, fester like a sore. And then he compares this same dream deferred to an injury, fester like a sore, and smelly or rancid smelly. I'm going to go with, um, he says stink. So something that's, uh, and then he uses the word rotten. So um, then he compares this same dream deferred to an injury, fester like a sore and smelly or rancid. Maybe you want to use a big word, rancid. Um, food stink like rotten meat notice how I'm going in the order that it happens in the poem and rancid food stink like rotten meat Um, let's see what else. Then we've got crust like a syrupy sweet. So, and thinking of that just sort of like sticky. So this idea of sticky, crusty, um, so fester like a sore and rancid food. Um, he continues.
his simile by comparing his similes by comparing that same dream to sticky more sticky food <laughs> we go from rancy food to sticky food um, to sticky I'm going to keep it with food for now and then we'll come back to it and edit and then I'm going to say to something sticky. And then we will go to sags like a heavy load. Ooh. Um, he continues his similes by comparing that same dream to something sticky, crust like a syrupy sweet. Hughes ends his simile similes with comparing comparing a dream deferred. Go back a dream deferred. Okay, a dream deferred to. I want to go back to the poem. Um, Maybe it sags, maybe it just sags like a heavy load. And when you think of heavy load, I mean, it could be, I, when I think of heavy load, I think of garbage, I think of laundry. Um, and so, you know, it, it depends on, you know, what you're thinking about. So maybe you could go with garbage, um, you know, if you have that connection, if you think of, you know, laundry, for me, I think of it like a like a laundry bag. So I'm going to, I'm going to use the word laundry uh, comparing ends his similes with comparing a dream deferred to, um, to perhaps laundry, which sags like a heavy load. So again, this is sort of, you know, that point to where you begin to interpret on your own. And as long as you're able to defend what you're saying, I think, you know, it's, it's anything is debatable. So that's what I love about writing is that you can always argue this point, you know, we can't sit Langston Hughes down and ex have him explain, you know, it's really our interpretation. So I, I just prefer to think about it like laundry um, and going to the laundromat if you've ever been, you know that when you're carrying all that laundry, it feels like a heavy load. And maybe that is just really talking more about speaking more to my experience as a person. So here's what we have, um, fellow right writers. We've got the poem Harlem by Langston Hughes uses similes. A simile is when a writer compares two nouns, a person, a place, a thing, or an idea, using like or as. In his poem, Hughes compares a dream deferred to a wrinkled grape when he says, dry up like a raisin in the, in the sun. Then he compares this same dream deferred to an injury, fester like a sore, and rancid food, stink like rotten meat. He continues his similes by comparing that same dream to something sticky, crust like a syrupy sweet. Hughes ends his similes with comparing a dream deferred to laundry, which sags like a heavy load. Therefore, Hughes uses, and again, notice how I'm coming back, right, writers full circle, coming back to him using similes. Therefore, Hughes uses many similes. And, you know, my question to you is, are these positive or negative examples? 
So when something is drying up like a raisin in the sun, festering like a sore, stinking like rotten meat, crusting over like a syrupy sweet, and sagging like a heavy load, are we thinking positive or are we thinking negative? So if you're with me on this, I I definitely feel like this is more of a negative tone because um, it's there's a lot of questions being asked and it seems like the comparisons are negative. So we want to sort of leave the reader with something um, to think about. And so that's why I'm going to end with, therefore, Hughes uses many similes, many negative similes. Because again, if you're delaying your dream, you're putting it aside. You're not making it happen. You're not making it come true. And so because of that, it just sort of, it's postponed. It's sitting there. It's waiting for you to make it happen. And that's why this tone, the tone of this poem is really negative. Um, And so therefore Hughes Hughes uses many similes Um, many negative or many similes with a negative tone or a big word, if you'd like it, is uh, really connotation. Now, connotation is the feeling associated with the language. So think connotation, think feeling. So um, you can write feeling, therefore Hughes uses many similes with a negative feeling, with negative feelings to describe a dream that never comes true or a dream that never, that has been postponed. So we can say that, and if you want um, a bigger word, similes with negative feelings, or you can say with a negative connotation. And I think we're going to do that in the high school example, um, high school and, and, you know, maybe freshman composition, um, ENC 1101, perhaps. So we'll do that for our next paragraph. So therefore, Hughes uses many similes with negative feelings to describe a dream that has been postponed. I feel pretty comfortable with that. And so now we're going to use our high school example here or eighth grade also. So we're going to put our high school example. You know, I'm thinking, you know, eighth grade to, you know, ENC 1101. So why does this and and I think we sort of started to get around to that when we talked about the tone or the feeling, the negative feelings, the negative examples, the negative comparisons that he's using for what happens when you postpone or when you delay a dream or an opportunity. So drying up like a raisin in the sun. So why using that? So when you think about, again, this idea of a sun, it's shrinking it, it's wrinkling it. So I want to think of this idea of shrinkage, you know, shrinking, wrinkling, you know, you've, you've left it, left it out to dry. Um, And so, and it dried up so long, this grape that it's become a raisin. And so it's, um, you know, it's something that's forgotten. So again, just sort of ideas that are coming to me on why Langston Hughes would compare this delayed dream to a raisin in the sun. Fester like a sore. So it's festering. So in this case, you know, a sore definitely has a negative feeling with it, negative connotation. And we've got this idea of, you know, if you're picking at a scab and if you're not, and you're not taking care of it, you know, it starts to expand or and just grow. Um, and so thinking about that, you might think of, um, you know, this obviously has a negative connotation, but it's not being taken care of. So it's being neglected. 
um, because you're you're not you're not treating it. You're not giving it for a you know you're not applying your first aid kit. Um, you know, uh, uh, some sort of ointment on it. And so you're neglecting um, your health. So neglected, I want to think of, you know, health, neglected health. Um, and that's what I'll put on that. So this neglect, and I guess instead of um, in the health, I'm going to put it's unhealthy. And, um, and maybe, you know, it's got scabs on it. So I'm going to put, you know, scabs. Stink like rotten meat. So if you've ever smelled rotten meat, you definitely um, know what that smells like. And it is just potent. So, I mean, it really reeks. So this idea of something um, reeking, you know, it reeks. Um, it's really just not good. So, um, you know, reeks, it smells, it's um, just, like I said in the middle school example, it's rancid. And what happens to meat when it's rotting, if you notice, it tends to get maggots on it. So, you know, you've got definitely this and, and again, only if you've smelled rotten meat do you know what that looks like um, or smells like. And it's just horrible, that, that smell that you get. So I'm going to put reeks, smells, rancid, and I'm going to put this idea of, you know, maggots on it. Um, and that's what happens to meat when it's been sitting out just left to rot. So, um, and then it's got this idea of crust. And he talks about crust over and this sugary, like a syrupy sweet. And so, again, it's this idea of, you know, something can be, sometimes we think of something sugary as being delicious, but if it's too sugary, if it's too sweet, it, we don't like it. You know, we, we it's, it's, you know, if you've ever had sweet tea with too much sugar in it, you know, your teeth almost hurt. So, um, crusting like a syrupy sweet. I, I want to think again, um, I'm going to add negative up here as well. Um, I'm going to say, you know, something that's, um, and if it's, if it crusts over, so it's got this shell on the outside. So think of this shell casing um, over and it's protected. And maybe what's, if we break the crust, you know, we can allow the sugar, um, the dream to, um, to be something that provides us something sweet, something positive, but it's, I'm going to put this idea of this shell casing, it's protected. Um, but it also is uh, negative because again, this idea of something being too sweet, um, can, can be a negative thing. And then we have sags like a heavy load. So, you know, we're dragging it. So I want you to think of something that's being dragged, dragging. Um, it's, you know, we're carrying it with us. So carrying it, we've got this weight that just won't go away. And again, very, uh, you know, we've got these negative, uh, negative tone, negative connotations associated with all these similes. So now we've gone into more specifics as to why this comparison is being made. And now we can begin to write our paragraph. So we're going to use a lot of, you know, we're going to use this idea of this beginning from the middle school example for our high school example. Um, and again, we can always edit later. And we're going to start to begin to uh, make our paragraph and really get into the 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 thick of it, so to speak. Um, all right, let's take a look at the poem Harlem by Langston Hughes. Now, this time I'm going to be more specific and I'm going to go ahead and say um, uses similes, many similes with negative feelings. 
to describe a dream that has been postponed. A simile is when a writer compares two nouns using like or as. In his poem, I'm going to go ahead and borrow again, just straight copy paste here. We did the work. Let's use it again. In his poem, Hughes compares a dream deferred to a wrinkled grape when he says, dries up like a raisin in the sun. Here, the simile strikes a negative chord or a negative connotation because the grape has been forgotten to the point to the point of it shrinking into a tiny a tiny ooh i like this a tiny copy of its former self because a grape a raisin is a grape i mean it's it's what it was it wanted it it used to be a grape and now it's it's a copy of itself, of its former self. So I really like this example. This is what I love about writing is that right writers, you know, when you're with crews, you know, we're just allowing it to unfold and reveal itself. And um, it's just one of the processes I love about writing. So here the simile strikes a negative, um, I'm going to say strikes a negative chord because the great, because the grape has been forgotten to the point of it shrinking into a copy, a tiny copy of its former self. I love that. Um, let's continue. Um, Hughes negativity or Hughes, Hughes, Hughes continues his negative, his negativity, his negative tone by comparing this delayed dream to neglected, and so I guess, you know, we have this idea of neglected, unhealthy. Um, Hughes continues his negative tone by comparing this delayed dream to And I'm going to maybe say to uh, scab or to an injury that has been neglected or to a scab, to an injury. I'm going to use the word injury that has been neglected. Notice how I'm using the words here and then just kind of elaborating on that. Again, I'm explaining the why. Hughes continues his negative tone by comparing this delayed dream to an injury that has been neglected. When he states, and we're going to say fester like a sore. And then we continue. He continue he ala he continues his he's almost like elaborating. So he continues his um, 
elaborate. He he elaborates. He continues his sim. Can you say simile elaboration? <laughs> he continues his simile elaboration. Um, we're going to see how uh, Google Docs feels about this. <laughs> he continues his simile elaboration by, um, and I think I'm going to put the rotten meat and crust like a syrupy sweet together. So he continues his um, simile elaboration by comparing simile elaboration with negative and now we can even say word choice with negative um almost it's almost like he's using even imagery here he continues his simile elaboration with negative um words or word choice um he continues his simile elaboration with negative word choice with negative, let's put in negative images of food, images of food, and we'll keep it like that. And that way we can use both of them there. Stink, uh, like rotten meat. And crust like a syrupy sweet. I'm taking out sort of the question marks there because I want it to just kind of, you know, flow a little bit. He continues his simile elaboration with negative images of food, stink like rotten meat and crust like a syrupy sweet. Here, indeed, indeed the... These similes trigger negative negative feelings. All right. Um, indeed, these similes trigger negative feelings and um, indeed, these similes trigger negative, I'm going to say negative ideas, because when meat is left to rot, maggots begin to um, maggots can be found or when meat is left to rot meat rotting meat attracts when meat is left to rot it attracts maggots while While something too sugary, while something which has a, a sugared crust or a sugary crust while something which has a Indeed, these similes trigger negative ideas because when meat is left to rot, it attracts maggots. Meanwhile, I'm going to use meanwhile as a transition word here. Meanwhile, something which has a sweet crust
I put protected, a shell casing. Um, I'm going to say protective casing and then and maybe part of that protective casing is really feeling like um, something crusty has a protective casing so it's almost like it's there's this idea of being of feeling that you're um, you know you're kind of feeling vulnerable so and maybe that's part of it um, but we'll kind of sit with that for a minute. Meanwhile, something crusty has a protective, um, a vulnerable protective casing or a vulnerable casing or a vulnerable shell. Maybe we'll keep with that, uh, that shell idea. And then sags like a heavy load Cues. Okay, so we've got sags like a heavy load, dragging, carrying weight to negative tone. So indeed, these similes trigger negative ideas because when meat is left to rot, it attracts maggots. Meanwhile, something crusty has a vulnerable shell. Hughes closes is... Oh, um, even though he does talk about, or does it explode, like the dream being deferred closes, but he pretty much, he closes his, his similes um, with, you know, we've got this exploding, <laughs> exploding dream at the end, but we're going to end with, again, with the simile sags like a heavy load. Hughes closes his similes with, um, closes his simile, his dream deferred simile. Comparison, dream deferred comparison with with too, with something um, with too much weight. Or closes his dream deferred with a weighty comparison. And then we're gonna put sags like a heavy load. So we've got this um, with a weighty or a heavy, you know, I'm thinking of synonyms for heavy, weighty, um, you know, you could say fat with a fat comparison. But I, I think sometimes, you know, fat can be um, something that's in abundance. So I, for me, that I, I want to use something that's, you know, similar to heavy or weighty or um, just, uh, again, something that's it's dragging, we're carrying it. So Hughes closes his dream deferred with a, almost like, again, I'm just trying to think of how to say dragging, carrying weight, negative tone um, with, a, I'm just gonna leave it with weighty, with a weighty comparison, sags like a heavy load where he seems to, where he implies that dragging, carrying, where he implies 
that is too much to bear, too much to carry, too much to carry and drag. Drag and carry. I think I like that better, where he implies that the weight is, is too much to carry, too much to carry, too much. I think I like to drag. It's too much to drag. All right, let's take a look at that. The poem Harlem by Langston Hughes uses many similes with negative feelings to describe a dream that has been postponed. A simile is when a writer compares two nouns, a person, a place, a thing, or an idea, using like or as. In his poem, Hughes compares a dream deferred to a wrinkled grape when he says, dry up like a raisin in the sun. Here, the simile strikes a negative chord because the grape has been forgotten to the point of it shrinking into a tiny copy of its former self. I love that. Hughes continues his negative tone by comparing this delayed dream to an injury that has been neglected when he said, when he states fester like a sore, when he states fester like a sore. He continues his simile elaboration with negative images of food, stink like rotten meat and crust like a syrupy sweet. Indeed, these similes trigger negative ideas because when meat is left to rot, it attracts maggots. Meanwhile, something crusty has a vulnerable shell. Something crusty has a vulnerable shell. Um, Hughes, I think I want to elaborate on that one a little bit. Um, indeed, these similes trigger negative ideas because when meat is left to rot, it attracts maggots. Meanwhile, something crusty has a vulnerable has a vulnerable shell. Crusty has a vulnerable shell. Yet we cannot get to the. Yet we yet. Cannot get to the sugary, um, yet one cannot get to the delicious center. So um, something that's sweet, so delicious, something crusty has a vulnerable shell, yet um, something crusty, meanwhile, something crusty has a vulnerable shell, yet one cannot get to the del delicious center. Something crusty has an exposed, um, but again, it's crusty, but if you notice, you know, sugar is something that can be easily, um, you know, popped or broken. Um, so, I'm, I think I'm just going to leave that. Something crusty has a vulnerable shell. Hughes, indeed, these similes trigger negative ideas because when meat is left to rot, it attracts maggots. Meanwhile, something crusty has a vulnerable, exposed shell. Vulnerable, exposed shell. Hughes closes his dream deferred with a weighty comparison. Sags like a heavy load where he implies that the weight is simply too much to drag. I'm going to say is simply too much to drag. Therefore, my favorite closer, um, clo closing transition word here. Thank you, uh, Bright Writers with Cruz for being here this long. Therefore, Hughes, therefore, Hughes,
highlights um, to describe a dream that has been postponed. Again, we're coming back full circle. Um, therefore, Hughes highlights all the negative all the negative experiences connected to delaying a dream. Okay, so let's take a moment and kind of sit with that for just a second. And I'm gonna go ahead and expand this. One last time and we will wrap it up. Thank you so much. Love you guys for being here this long. The poem Harlem by Langston Hughes uses many similes with negative feelings to describe a dream that has been postponed. A simile is when a writer compares two nouns using like or as. In his poem, Hughes compares a dream deferred to a wrinkled grape. When he says, dry up like a raisin in the sun. Here, the simile strikes a negative chord because the grape has been forgotten to the point of it shrinking into a tiny copy of its former self. Hughes continues his negative tone by comparing this delayed dream to an injury that has been neglected when he states, fester like a sore. He continues, okay, so we've got continues and continues. So I'm gonna say he expands on his simile elaboration with a negative images of food. Stink like rotten meat and crust like a syrupy sweet. Indeed, these similes trigger negative ideas because when meat is left to rot, it attracts maggots. Meanwhile, something crusty has a vulnerable exposed shell. Hughes closes his dream deferred with a weighty comparison, sags like a heavy load, where he implies that the weight is simply too much to drag. Therefore, Hughes highlights all the negative experiences connected to delaying a dream. Um, and so really, you know, that's, that's really almost, he's warning us. Um, so highlights with, almost with warnings. Um, therefore, Hughes highlights all the negative warnings um, with warnings Hughes highlights all the negative because a highlight sometimes can be like something that can be positive but I kind of like the play on words on that so I'm going to leave it therefore Hughes highlights all the negative experiences connected to delaying a dream. And I, I think I'm going to leave it with that. So we've got our high school example here. And then for a moment, I'm going to go ahead and leave this uh, middle school example. Thank you, Right Riders, for sticking, sticking it out here to the very end, to the bitter end of writing a paragraph just focusing on one idea. In this case, we looked at similes and specifically we looked at Langston Hughes and his poem, Harlem. Take heed and take it as a warning. Right writers, do not delay those dreams. Never leave a dream deferred um, for it will come back to haunt you. <laughs> so. Um, with that, I want to say thank you so much. Love you guys. I hope this experience was useful, helpful as you continue your writing journey. Take care. Bye-bye.